on, Life Point Church, if you're happy to be here, can you give God the praise? Can we give Jesus the praise? He's the one worthy. Come on, somebody. Man. Well, man, Philip, Vic, I don't know where, where Victoria uh, Jackson, I don't know where you're at, but can we just give it up for our two students doing that announcement video? Man. Uh, I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much um, for being here with us today. If it's your first time here at LifePoint, uh, we just wanna say thank you. Thank you for coming into this place. It's an, maybe a new experience for you. Uh, this could be a little uncomfortable coming into a new space. And today, I hope this can be home for you. My name's Hayden. I'm the student pastor here at LifePoint. And uh, I, I, me and my wife, Shannon, we've been here for two years now. It's pretty crazy. Uh, fell in love with Wilmington, moved here from Tampa, Florida to this amazing church, Life Point Church. Two locations, one Pine Valley, one Leland Church. Can we welcome our Leland location joining us right now? Man, we're so glad that you guys are here with us. And um, yeah, we moved here two years ago. It's insane. Uh, amazing being in this, uh, this city. Uh, Shannon and I were on the beach. Like we live at the beach. That's amazing. Uh, we were on the beach Friday talking about the past two years and all that God's done and what we've got to see do, God do, but I couldn't be, um, I couldn't be doing this if it wasn't for the team, the staff, and our, and our lead pastor, Pastor Jeff Capusta. Come on, can you give it up for Pastor Jeff if you love him? He's uh, he's our lead pastor here and uh, an authentic, authentic guy. Uh, a friend and um, someone that I never really knew I'd be able to call my boss um, such a close friend, someone that I love and uh, I can go to when I'm when I'm tired, when I'm hurt, uh, when I'm when I'm struggling. He's somebody that I'm not afraid to talk to, but I look forward to seeing and speaking to. And uh, man, we love our pastor. Um, and Shannon and I, when we uh, came here to Life Point, we were asked to be over our sixth through twelfth grade students here at at Life Point and to oversee the ministry that is United generation, and uh, it's been a journey. It's been an amazing um, two years seeing what God's done this past summer. God has just been moving and moving and moving. Uh, we had a conference over this summer, UG Conf. It was absolutely incredible, where we challenged students to go beyond. That whole song that we were singing at the very beginning, that, that hit some uh, personal things with me because I, uh, that's my, my cry for our students here in Wilmington, that they would move from where they are currently to beyond to where God wants them to be. And the entire conference was about students simply just taking one step. And we saw students um, all throughout our student ministry and through the city taking steps, getting baptized. We saw 23 students baptized at the beach just a couple days ago. That's something to celebrate. Uh, challenging students to, to start a small group, to start leading a group, to, to start serving on Sunday mornings. And it's kind of crazy because we have, we titled today's the student takeover, but honestly, I, I, I want every Sunday to be a, a student takeover. There's not a single day that it's like, okay, this is the student's day to, to start serving. This is the student's day to start being a part of the church. The reality here at LifePoint is that students are the church, you're the church, we are the church. And so every single Sunday we see, we see students serving in different capacities from production. I just saw Maya, one of our students, taking photos of service. I, I see we have students serving in our kids' ministry. We have, we have students in the lobby. We have uh, students are serving because we are the church. And I, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about that, but the message today, it's, it's not so much just for, for students. I believe it's, it's for God's church. And it doesn't matter who's up here on the platform, whether it's me, you, maybe even one of our students. The reality is when we open God's word, he's gonna speak today. And so no matter what life stage you find yourself in currently, can you lean in to what God might have for you today? And so I encourage you to, to take notes on the note card in the seat back in front of you uh, uh, or right underneath your seat. Maybe take notes if you have a phone. Lean in because I believe that the Alpha the Omega, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God who created space and time, he wants to speak to you today. And he has something very clear he wants to talk to you today, no matter the life stage that you find yourself in. I can't wait to jump into everything God has for us, but I like to pray and invite him into the space. So can you pray with me before we jump in? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. God, thank you for your grace. God, thank you that we have a house like Life Point, where we can come and worship you, God. Thank you for our country that we get to freely worship you, Jesus. God, I pray and ask that you would speak to us today. Lord, I pray that my words would not be my words, that it would be your words. God, we love you. 
we praise you. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Kids these days, right? Kind of crazy. It's all over the place. Come on, we're, we're all family here. We can be honest. Kids these days. Have you ever heard someone say that before? Kids these days? Like usually it's because they have no idea what kids these days are doing, right? Like they're like, Kid, oh, kids these days, being crazy. Be, be, you know, with kids these days, it's so hard to keep up because there's like a new internet trend every five minutes. Can anybody agree with me? It's like, what is happening right now? And I, I, I'm not that old. I'm, I'm, I'm not old at all. And I still can't keep up. Like I'm on Instagram all the time and I still cannot keep up. There are trends and fads every day. And so I was looking up what a fad was, okay? And I have a definition for you, what a fad actually is. It's defined this way, something that will become huge and then fizzle into nothingness and be totally forgotten. <laughs> so, so something that becomes huge and then it fizzles into nothingness, it's totally forgotten. That's the Urban Dictionary <laughs> version of that definition. But that's a fad. It's here for a little while and then it Vanishes. Here's just a couple fads from this year. Okay, we cannot forget you maybe have seen a sixth grade boy do this like a thousand times. It's called the floss. It was made, it was made popular by the backpack kid. Do we have that back there? The floss. Yes, this kid. You've probably seen your 12-year-old cousin. He's like just at the family reunion. Like, what is it? I don't know. But it was huge. And it's still huge, and it can go away, and I'd be very happy. But it's something we see. It was the dab like two years ago. It was like every single kid on any football game, it was like this. Like every time, the dab. And so you have, you have the floss. You have, you have the kiki challenge. We can't forget the kiki challenge. Come on, somebody. You know the kiki challenge. We have that back there. I think like it was all over the internet. People get out of their cars. Just start dancing. This is something everybody was doing to Drake's song, In My Feelings. Yeah, she jumps on the car, Liza Koshy. She's awesome. Then you got the, the, the Yodel Boy. You know, who can forget the most annoying video in the world? Hey, let's play it for everybody. Mr. Uh, is it? Yes. Wow. Okay, so the Yodel Boy was in Walmart and that video went viral, all sorts of memes, and he's actually like really famous now, a big country star, like he's making, he's making the most of his fad. And then who remembers uh, Yanny or Laurel? Anybody remember Yanny or Laurel? This would split some families up at the dinner table, right? You don't have friends now, right now because of Yanny and Laurel. Hey, can we play Yanny or Laurel for them? Laurel, Laurel. Laurel. Who hears Yanny? Laurel. Okay. Who hears Laurel? Laurel? Yeah, I'm like, I was here, I'm gonna be honest, I was hearing Laurel earlier this week, and then right at this moment, I just heard Yanny, and now I feel like I'm going a little crazy. But some people, like, would choose their friend groups after this, but it was like Yanny or Laurel. It was like, you're crazy. You're obviously an alien. Like, you don't, you're not, uh, you can't hear things correctly. And then right now, this is the dumbest one. I still can't, it's probably just dumb because I can't do it. Anybody know what I'm going with? So it's this thing like where you put your your fingers like this and you do that. Can y'all show them? It's called the Dell. De yeah, this thing. How is he doing that? It's like, so now kids in pictures are just like this all the time. Fads, trends, kids these days. This is what they're doing. This is, this is life as a teenager is keeping up with the fad, keeping up with the trend and all of these different fads, all of these different trends, they started and they're strong. They're popular, they're, 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 they're the biggest craze on the internet and then what do you know, they all fizzle out and we have already forgotten about them. And I, I share that with you today because on Student Takeover Weekend, I, I believe that no matter what life stage you're in, sometimes your faith can become a fad. Sometimes your faith can start really strong. Your relationship with Jesus, maybe there was a point in your life where you were all in with God, and then what do you know? That season comes every year, and it becomes old news. Your faith becomes a fad. I see it with teenagers all the time, and I see it with people all the time, where one season they are all in with Jesus, going beyond taking steps doing what God is asking them to do, and then they might find themselves 
in the fall or in the spring turning their back on God and looking at that faith as if it was just another fad. Oh, that's so 2008. That's so 2012. That was what I did last year. And for some of us, this can be true. And I've seen a trend even in church recently. We've seen in the past couple decades. It's amazing. We, uh, I went on Barna Research Group, did some research on teens in the church. And uh, some of their research was kind of staggering. In the 1950s, we saw 49%, almost half of teenagers in America were involved in the church somehow. They were regular attenders. They were uh, serving. They were a part of the local church in the 1950s, almost half of all American teenagers. Then we saw in the 2000s, that number dropped a little bit uh, to 43% of America. Uh, their teens were involved in church. And then we saw in 2013, we saw 36% started dropping even more. And then right now we're looking at about 25% of teenagers in America are involved in the church. We see this, this number, it continues to go down, it continues to go down, it continues to go down decade after decade. And we actually see three out of every five young Christians, 59%, they disconnect either permanently or for an extended period of time from church after age 15. So you can imagine the day that you get the car and you can start driving is the day that you say bye to church. This is sad especially for somebody in my profession, because I believe the church is here to give life. I believe the church is, is somewhere for you to plant your roots. I believe the church is a great place for a student to be plugged in because it's the house of God. It's pointing them in the right direction or the right people, a place for a student to be able to fulfill their gifts and their talents and have purpose and serve the kingdom of God. I believe the church is amazing, and I, and I believe that your relationship with God should not be something that you turn away from, but something that you are running or someone that you are running with. And I, 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 we see these, these numbers continue to go down, and I, I think that maybe even people in the room today could maybe relate. Maybe there was a point in your life where the church was something you were heavily involved in. Jesus was number one on your priority list, and maybe there was a turning point for you. You find yourself here back to get back in relationship with God. I don't know your story or your season that you're in, but I believe that fad faith is a reality for all of us. There's been plenty of seasons in my life where I have decided to turn my back on God and to focus on what I wanted in that season. There's been times in my life where things got really hard and I didn't want to continue following Jesus because of that particular season. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Fad faith has been a reality for me and I believe it's just a commonality for Christians today looking back at that relationship with God as that was cool, that was fun, but it's not applicable today. It's not something I actually need today. It's something that I've turned my back on. That is old news. And this whole summer, I've been challenging students to go beyond. And today on Student Takeover Weekend, I wanna challenge you to go beyond. I wanna challenge us as a church to go beyond fad faith. And so if you're taking notes today, I want you to title your notes this message, Go Beyond Fad Faith. Go Beyond Fad Faith. There's one scripture that has been um, kind of a rally cry for me as a student pastor in this past season. Um, it's been a scripture that I've gone to uh, frequently and I have to remind myself of and it gives me passion for what I want to see in your students and in our students here at Life Point Church. It's in Psalm 92 verses 12 through 15, it says this. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. Everybody say house. Planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish. Everybody say flourish. In the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, come on somebody, they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no wickedness in him. I don't know if you kind of dozed out once I started reading, but what the scripture is saying 
is that the righteous, they will flourish when they are planted in the house of the Lord. And it's not something that they will flourish just in season. They will flourish in all seasons, all the way into old age. They will pro proclaim the Lord. He is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. And man, if I have a desire for any of our 12-year-olds, any of our 15-year-olds, any of our 18-year-olds in our church, is that their relationship with God would not be a fad of high school. But when they're 60, 70, 80 years old, they are still proclaiming the Lord. He is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. The same God that saved them at 16 is the same God that loves them and they are pursuing and following at 60. And I believe as a church, we are positioned to see students go beyond fad faith. And I believe you too can go beyond fad faith. This doesn't just have to be something that's just here for a season. It's something that God wants for you for the rest of your life, your relationship with him. And today I believe that there's three truths that I've kind of found about fad faith and I believe God's word actually tells us how we can go beyond fad faith. And the first truth I've noticed about fad faith is this, and you might wanna write this down. Fad faith comes and goes with the highs and lows. Fad faith, it comes and it goes with the highs and lows. Lows. Paul actually talks about a faith that moves and goes, and whenever a season is a good season, whenever a season's a bad season, our faith tends to move from this to that. He actually speaks of this and warns us of it, and he describes this type of faith as being like infants. And he says it in Ephesians 4 14. He says this Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. I think what Paul's trying to help the church in Ephesus understand here is that, hey, if we want to be mature in faith, we can't be moved by every sway and every movement of the highs and lows of every season. This is almost like roller coaster faith. You could say fad faith is, is like a roller coaster in a way. It's one season we're up and one season we're down. And some of us, we've allowed our relationship with God be dictated by the emotions that we have in, our, in a particular season. We're, we're letting the rising and the falling of the world around us determine the rising and the falling of our faith in God. Some of us have uh, forgotten about the, the Jesus, the Savior, that he died on a cross and he rose from the grave and he saved you. And no matter the season that we are in, it doesn't matter how we feel in that season or in that moment. The truth is and the reality is, Jesus, he still died for you. Jesus, he still rose from the grave for you. Jesus still is knocking and he wants a relationship with, with you. The same God that loved you in the past is the same God that loves you in this moment right now. And some of us have to anchor ourselves to this truth and not continue to allow our emotions to lead us, but rather let our emotions be a gauge for us. And what do I mean by that? Well, the truth is your emotions are actually wired into where you find your hope, where you find your life. In that particular moment, what you are feeling right now is tied con and connected to where your hope is right now. And so I can assure you when you're, when you're down, when you're hurt, when you're frustrated, when you're gloomy, when you're, when you're in those lows of seasons, those lows of life, maybe some of you find yourself there right now at the end of the summer going into the fall. You're in a low. You're in a funk. I can guarantee you one thing. What you are wiring yourself to, what you are planted in is not Jesus. Right now, what you are focused on is not Jesus because when we are wired and planted and focused only on Jesus, we feel fulfilled. We have joy. We have life. The emotion that is tied to Jesus is not a low one. It's a, it's a high one. And we have to watch where our emotions are and let them be almost a gauge for us and not a guide for us. And some of us in our relationship with God, and I see it a lot in, in students and I've done it myself, is when 
God in, in church is, is not as, as fun as it used to be, I must assume that God must not be as fun as he used to be. <laughs> but because of that emotion that I felt, I've now labeled a truth on God. When my emotions are swinging from here to there and all over the place, why in the world should I let those emotions lead me? The truth of Jesus is he's still God. He still loves you. He still is pursuing you and he is still saving people. That's truth. And we believe that that is faith, no matter the season that we are in. Bad faith comes and goes with the highs and lows. Faith is here to stay. Faith in Jesus is here to stay no matter the season. And that, this is hard, especially when we're alone. It's hard to have faith in God when we are alone, and that's why the second thing I'd like you to write down is this. Our faith becomes a fad when we are isolated rather than together. Our faith becomes a fad when we are isolated rather than together. You see, when we're by ourselves and away from a community of Christians, away from the church and not an influencer in relationship with people that are like-minded and walking in the same faith with us, it's hard to keep the faith and who Jesus is. Because the reality is, really just isolation from the church is really just intense community with the world. And what Romans 12, two says is this, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I have a dog, his name's Zion, he's like our like our kid, honestly, it's pretty sad. Like we, we he's, he, I woke up this morning and he is like sprawled out on the bed. Like he's took, taken up all of my half of the bed. And uh, yeah, we spoil this dog. Some of you are judging me. Don't, it's, it's okay, it's my dog. And when we got him, we got him when we got married. So we've had him three years now, which is crazy. Uh, and uh, when we got him, we, we didn't really know what kind of dog he was. We adopted him and he was a mutt. So he's mixed with a bunch of different dogs. Uh, but whenever we had him, he looks a lot like a lab. The first night that we had him, uh, he starts howling, like howling refusely at his, at his, at his reflection in the mirror. And uh, so we assume, oh, he must have some hound in him. But then we actually realized over the course of years that Zion actually just mimics the dogs that he's around, the barks that they have. Isn't that strange? <laughs> like he will, like when we are around little Yorkies or little Dachshunds, he will match their bark. This big lab will try to match the high-pitched bark of the dogs around him. And he conforms honestly to the dogs around him. And I think I say that because I think for some of us, we forget how much the people we surround ourselves with have an influence on what we believe and what we trust and how we act and how we feel and how we speak. The people that we surround ourselves with and find ourselves circled around, just like Pastor Jeff explained last week, they dictate our life. They determine the direction that we are going. They determine where we are going. Who are our closest friends? Who has the most influence on us? Because by no means am I saying that we don't encourage our students to be friends of the world. We just encourage them to influence the world, not be influenced by it. But the truth is someone is influencing you. The truth is someone is influencing me and it's the closest circle around me. And we isolate ourselves from the people that should be influencing us. The church, the, the team here at LifePoint has been amazing for me personally because I get to work with people that are so much better than me. People that I get to, get to, to be like just because I work in proximity to them and I am surrounded by them. I become better just because I'm associated with them because of who I surround myself with. My, my, my future is, is, is in some ways determined. And our faith in God can seem to fade away when the people around us have little to no faith whatsoever in the same God that we love, the same God that we believe in. When we see that they're hopeless, we start to feel hopeless and the truth is, we have to chase the right circles. We have to chase the right groups of people to surround ourselves with. God forbid the day that the church neglects the circle. God forbid the day that you neglect the power of the circle and you look more at this gathering of believers as a gathering in rows rather than a gathering in circles. The truth is that for us as a student ministry and for us as a church, 
the row is simply a pathway to the circle. Pastor Jeff explained it last week, and I believe it the same for our students, is we would rather you be in a circle, in a small group, than have to come here if you had to choose between the two. We'd rather you be in a group because that group of people is going to push you in the right direction. The row is simply just a pathway to the circle. It was amazing last week, Pastor Jeff, if you were watching online and you can, or if you're in the room, go watch this message from last week where he actually asked uh, to get a survey in the room of how many people are new to the Wilmington area, and most people raised their hand. Most of us are trying to start over. Most of us are looking for those friends. Most of us are looking for those relationships, and we're craving them right now. Everyone in the room is. So why not get in a group? And we launched those. Uh, they went live this morning. You can see all of the groups that are happening here at LifePoint that you can be a part of, that you can join and get in the right circle. This is the passion of us at UG. This is the passion of our student ministry. And two years ago, we, we saw the need for students to be in a circle. So we made circles and small groups the main priority for us as a student ministry. When we came on two years ago, we got rid of a weekly service and we replaced it with a once a month service to make more room for groups throughout the month. Because the truth is, if you're a student in here, you know I'm gonna do one thing maybe with church a week. <laughs> if you're a stud, you'll do multiple, but for the most part, you don't have time to do multiple things with Jesus or the, with, with the church during the week. And so we gave them, okay, let's give them one option. <laughs> Let's give them the option of the group. And so what we did was we actually took away a weekly service. We replaced it with a once a month service called United Night that we have here where we pack this place out with students. And the end goal is for students to bring their friends and to see their students begin a relationship with God. But the, the pathway for United Night is, is, is not just for another United Night that's packed. It's to see students in circles, to see students in relationships. And I was honestly really nervous when we started this because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I didn't know how it was going to be when we launched groups instead of having a service. And, it, and it, it took, it's taking a while, we're still learning, but it's amazing to see high schoolers, 40, 30 high schoolers gathered in a house that we call house parties, worshiping God, sitting under teaching, and then breaking out into small groups and having to kick them out of the house to stop talking about Jesus because the host home needs to go to bed. That's an amazing thing to celebrate. And I think we've neglected the circle and we've forgotten the importance of how much we crave relationships. I mean, we have a relational God. He's three in one. He made you to have relationship with you. You don't think that his prized possession would want the exact same thing? We're all craving relationships. We're all craving friendships, whether we're introverted or extroverted. We need people because we have a value here of community at LifePoint that we are better together. Next week at United Night, we're talking about that, how we can't lose when we are together. And man, is it refreshing when I sit in a circle of, of students and high school boys or middle school boys, and they're able to, they're talking about Jesus, and they're building each other up, and they're encouraging one another through their pain and through their struggle, and everybody in the circle knows that no one in the circle is perfect, but we're all chasing a perfect God, and we're all walking together towards a perfect Jesus, and that close group that circle is helping them to not be isolated, but, but connected. And when we're connected and when we're in a circle, we can do this faith thing together. Fad faith can't exist when we are holding each other up and we're walking together in the circle together. And so I encourage you, if you have a middle school or a high school student, they need to be a part of our small groups this fall. We have house parties, like I just described, students gather from a community at a house in a community. We have those for high school and for middle schoolers here in Pine Valley, and then a middle school house party in Leland. And then during the week, we have different small groups that students are now leading, which is brand new for us. We have students leading groups. We have a basketball group happening. We have girls that are grabbing coffee, and they're saying, hey, if you have a student, come be with us, come circle with us. We wanna walk this journey together. And I'm so excited for those groups to kick off. But students need circles. We need circles, the right group of people that we're walking with each and every day.
We can't have fad faith when we're in the right circle. And then the third point I want you to write down is this. Fad faith is dependent on receiving rather than responding. Fad faith is dependent on receiving rather than responding. We definitely live in a culture, don't we, of receiving. We live in a consumer culture here in America where we consume and we consume and we consume. Everything is service for us. Every program, every organization is a service for our benefit. And for some of us, we have created church as just another organization to serve me, to serve my needs, to serve what I need. But here's the, the crazy thing about the kingdom of God and the church, is that when we make this relationship with Jesus, this experience with his church, when we make it about consuming something and receiving something, the ironic thing is we will never receive it. Because we don't receive in the way that the world does in this kingdom. We receive through giving. Everything that God has for us, we actually receive when we serve. Because what we're looking for and craving, every single person in the room, we're, we're craving joy. We're buying things and we're, we're trying new things and we're, yesterday we probably were watching college football, thank God that's back and, and uh, we're, we're, we're having Chick-fil-A and we're, we're wanting that raise and yeah, Chick-fil-A's in the same sentence as all of those things but we're consuming and we're consuming and we're consuming and some of us were looking and looking for happiness and we're not gonna find it because what we really want is joy, eternal happiness, and we can only find that when we serve, when we bear much fruit. For some of us, we've made the church a church about us, and I think that the world needs to see a church that is not so preoccupied with receiving. We are so much more preoccupied with giving. We preach that we are satisfied and that Jesus has died and he has rose from the grave, that it is finished. We preach this, yet some of us act like there is still something to be done for us. Can we be a church? Can we be Christians that are satisfied in everything that Jesus has already done for us? He has done everything you need. He's done it. He's, he's died. He's risen from the grave. We have everything we need as humans we have eternity with God. The victory has been won. And what if the world could see that the church is satisfied fully in Jesus? I believe that the world would want some of that Jesus. If they could see that we are satisfied in who he is and what he's done for us, that we don't need anything else, man, people are gonna want some of that Jesus. And the amazing thing, thing is that the paradox of joy is that we actually receive joy when we give and bear much fruit. And that's why as a student ministry and as a church, our goal for students is that they would bear much fruit. Psalm 92, 14, the scripture I read at the beginning, it says this. It says that they will still bear fruit in old age. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. Our end goal for our students is that they would bear fruit. And what does that mean? It means that they would serve. It means that they would bear fruit for Jesus in his kingdom. It means that they would show love to this community, that they would, that they would bear fruit. But how do we bear fruit? How does something bear fruit if it is, if it is not planted? And so for us and for our students, we want to see students planted in the house of the Lord. My goal for students is not that this room would be just filled with students, and that's definitely a win, but if that's, this room filled with students would be planted in the house and would be serving on Sundays, would be serving during the week, that they would be serving in the kingdom. Because the truth is we were all made to serve. God wired you and knitted you. He knew you before you even knew you. He knew your gifts and your talents. He made them. And you were given the gifts and the talents that you were given to serve his kingdom. Because this thing, this, this time on earth, it is so short. 
that is so temporary in the span of eternity. Most of our eternity will be spent in heaven, in his kingdom. We were made for that kingdom. God's given you gifts, he's given you talents to build up his kingdom for eternity. And when we serve and when we use those gifts and those talents to serve his kingdom, we experience satisfaction like none other. It is called joy. And we desire this for all of our students as students are seeking joy in so many of the wrong places. We want students to seek joy from his kingdom, from using their gifts and talents to serve him. Hey, you like to talk to people. Hey, I got a team for you. Hey, you like to hang out with uh, the, the kids in the, in, the, in the nursery. I have a team for you. You like to take photos. We have a team for you. You like to run camera. You like lights. We have a team for you. You have an interest in this area. You have a skill and you have a purpose. And while the rest of the world is so quick to give our students purpose, I want the church to be at the front running of giving students purpose and identity you have a place here. You are not the church of tomorrow. You are the church of today. Right now, we are the church. And when students bear fruit, we win. When you bear fruit, we win. Because we want you to bear fruit. Jesus wants you to bear fruit. He says this in John 15, 16. He says this, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and what? Bear fruit. Fruit that will last. So whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. See, we didn't even choose this route. We didn't even know what we wanted. Jesus already knew it before we knew it. He chose us and he appointed us so that we could bear fruit fruit. Jesus' desire for you, his desire for me, his desire for our students is that they would bear much fruit. But something cannot bear fruit. Faith cannot bear fruit if it is not planted. This summer, uh, I saw students take a lot of steps from our conference um, to uh, baptism we took a group of students to Mexico. Um, I've seen a lot of this church take amazing steps. Just last weekend, we had a dream team experience where we saw almost 200 people come on the dream team. 200 people say, yeah, I wanna go through this fast pass because I want to serve. I wanna take a step. I wanna bear much fruit. In a season with a lot of momentum and going back to three services next week and seeing this place fill with people. My hope, my desire is that this faith, this journey of steps would not be a fad for you. That this would simply be the start to an amazing journey that God wants to take you on. A journey of continuous steps walking with him. But the truth is, I haven't been doing this that long, but I've been doing it long enough, growing up in a pastor's household and doing student ministry for about five years now that I've been able to see that seasons have a heavy determination on our faith. That from one season to another, we might be all in, and then in another season, we might be all out. And I feel like I have one challenge for you as a church. So if you get anything from this whole message, I want you to get this. I wanna challenge you that while fads die, Jesus lives. Get planted in his house today and go beyond fad faith. Get planted in the house because the house will help you to grow and to bear much fruit. Do you need to come to church to be a Christian? By no means. You can have a relationship with God and spend eternity with Jesus by never stepping foot in a church. But man, if you wanna bear much fruit, you need to get planted 
in the house. Join a small group, start serving, and start bearing much fruit as we go beyond bad faith. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, Lord, I pray that you would help us to go beyond bad faith, that this journey, that our faith would not be something that's here today and gone tomorrow, but God, it would be something that is lasting and something that bears fruit even into old age. Church, maybe you're in this room today at both of our locations. And I'm talking about bearing much fruit. I'm talking about faith being a fad. And you would maybe say, Hayden, I've never actually had faith in this Jesus that you're talking about. I've never actually had a relationship with God. You're talking about turning your back on the journey. Hey, I haven't even started the journey. But I want to. I want to start the journey. And if you want to start this journey with Jesus, if you want to put your faith in him, it's so easy. It's just saying yes to Jesus. See, he came and he died for you and he rose from the grave so that you could have a relationship with him. He's knocking. The question is, will you answer? And right now in the seat you're sitting in, you can say yes to Jesus right now. No matter where you are, you can just say, yeah, God, I want to start the journey. And if you want to start the journey with Jesus, you want to begin a relationship with him, I want you to just say this to God right now. Dear Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I've messed up. But God, I'm believing that your son, Jesus, his death and resurrection was enough for me. And God, I'm committing my life to following you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. If you said something like that to God just now, if you just said that to God for the first time, can you do something for me? I just wanna celebrate with you. I just wanna say that's amazing, that's awesome. Can you lift your hand and just wave at me and say, I said that, yes, that's me. Awesome, awesome. I see a couple hands go up, that's so cool. That's amazing, thank you. Awesome, awesome. God, we love you. Jesus, we praise you. You are king and you are Lord. Thank you for those that just started this season and God, I pray that for those that have been in this journey, people that have been following God, that their faith would not become a fad and they would get planted in the house today. God, we love you and we praise you. In your name we pray. And everybody said, hey, come on, can we give God some praise in this place? We saw hands go up all throughout the room. Come on, everybody. Thanks for watching. We hope this message was a blessing to you. And here at LifePoint, we're a church of next steps and we wanna help you take yours. So head over to lifepointnow.com where you can join a serve team, you can join a small group, or you can even give online. And make sure you hit our subscribe button. We don't want you to miss any of the content we push to our YouTube channel. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.